jump, flip, shoot, twist, duck, roll, contort, slide, wall jump, spin, somersault, superman, aim, shoot, kill. This game is all about speed and acrobatics. It's a 2D platforming shooting game all about doing things as quickly as possible while also giving yourself as much time as possible. It's deadly, it's exhilarating, and there aren't many games that'll make you feel this badass. On top of all the other adjectives and adverbs, we have blood, bullets, bananas. This is My Friend Pedro. How's it going guys? My name is Graham. Welcome to Two Left Thumbs. This is Flashlight, the series where I look at the history of all things Flash on the internet. Today I want to talk about the new game My Friend Pedro and its Flash Game Origins. To be honest, I didn't even know it had Flash Game Origins. Someone mentioned it to me on Twitter and I got all giddy about doing a Flashlight episode. So I'm a little late to the party, but I'd rather be late than crash the party the way this main character does. Back in 2013, Victor Agron, aka Dead Toast, as he sometimes goes by it left a job of roughly six years at Media Molecule, specifically working on Little Big Planet 1 and 2 and Tearaway. His job title was level designer, but as with most jobs, they had him doing other odd things here and there before he decided to make the jumping, rolling, daring leap into indie development. At least I assume he did it in such a stylish way. Seems to be his thing. Dead Toast had a history of making Flash games in his late teens, back around 2005 to 2007. I remember playing a few of them here and there, but nothing was a big breakout hit. One project that he had left unfinished before beginning at Media Molecule was a game that he called Blacklist. It was sitting nearly completed seven years prior, but as a first step into going indie in 2013, it was time to polish off this project. This was eventually released in 2014 with the name change to My Friend Pedro, sponsored by Adult Swim Games. The art is a little crude, some of the transitions between movements don't always connect, the narrow maps make bullet dodging nearly impossible, and the setup of the weird premise feels like a missed opportunity. But the bones of the game are here. There's a sentient banana leading the way, guns and destruction, and the ability to slow down time to help you chain together death-defying stunts and kills. The game spread quickly and fans were immediately eager for more. This was quickly followed up with My Friend Pedro Arena. Now, it was quickly because it uses the exact same engine with largely the same art assets. It plays like a survival mode of the original game, earning credits through combos to unlock new weapons and arenas. I guess having the sandbox was nice, but it felt fairly repetitive. It wasn't the exciting innovation that maybe people were hoping for. Games take a long time to develop, even when you don't shelve it for seven years. So I'm not going to disparage him for trying to squeeze a few extra pennies out of there. A little bit of extra cash flow might have been what freed him up for his next project. We can now look at this Flash game as a prototype, with Victor diving fully into a PC release adaptation switching to Unity and 3D assets, utilizing skills he had honed working with Media Molecule. He took inspiration from titles like Mad Max and The Matrix. The cool characters, guns, leather, and slow-mo are all quite reminiscent of those other IPs. He worked to create an acrobatic shooter that behaves as a ballet of bullets and blood. A large goal of the game was to have the player feel personally skilled and fully in control, rather than initiating and simply watching quick-time action scenes. There is now a blog laying out the development of this new game. Very early concept showcases feature a very generic looking character similar to the original game. Immediately, besides the 3D art, there's some interesting additions. You can now independently control your guns, which honestly reminds me of the limb control featured in Little Big Planet. It was Victor's first foray into 3D modeling, rigging, and texturing, but apparently he's a fast learner, and had enough to show off a trailer after only eight months of on and off development. As the game went deeper into development after the initial marketing push, Victor was able to respond directly to feedback from his followers, simultaneously making the game more realistic by fixing the wonky way the player's arms 360'd around the body, while also further breaking reality with a Tesla-style electric gun. Grounding the physics and the action of the game in reality as much as possible makes the world-bending time changes and exciting weapon choices that much more interesting by contrast. At least that's how I view it. It's funny specifically talking about those 360 arms. Victor said he knew he never wanted that to stay in the game. 
But when you're building your list of priorities, it starts to slip away a little bit, and after months and months of development, you kind of forget that it's there. He was really enjoying the process of showing the game to people and getting feedback on little things like this. As we follow along with the blog, the physics and particle systems got increasingly complex, while also adding in things like wall jumping off enemies, sawing them in half with shotguns, flipping tables for cover, diving through lasers, ducking behind car doors, boosting your jump with a concussive weapon, double crossbows, one thing after another, feature after feature, making the game more exhilarating, more interactive, giving the player more choices to show off within the game. Eventually we have the first edition of Pedro the Banana, as the story and cutscenes of the game began to take shape. We eventually see the involvement of Devolver Digital, redone modeling, a more unique aesthetic, and more dynamic camera moving and shifting through the 2D plane. Once the core game was in place, work began on Pedro's world, adding psychedelic levels of insanity to a game already barely grounded in reality. Hell, if you're gonna flip around shooting people, slow down time, and talk to a banana, what good is grounded? We might as well strap on that propeller hat and float right off that ground into the sky of madness, right? After years of development, at this time last year, the game picked up nominations for Best of E3 by PC Gamer and CGM, Best Action Game by IGN, and it won Best Indie Game by Reset MX. Going back five years to that Flash game, years of a fun development blog, years of cool Twitter gifts and previews, many best of nominations and wins, we now have the full release of My Friend Pedro, Blood, Bullets, Bananas, on PC and the Nintendo Switch, accompanied by one of the most exciting balls-to-the-wall launch trailer animations I've ever seen. Huge shout-out to Wiz Design who produced that short, and CRCR for directing. When looking to the Flash game world, one specific thing that Victor claims was an inspiration was actually Madness Interactive. Madness being something else that I've covered in this Flashlight series before. He liked the way that you could independently control your limbs to interact with the weapons. Victor claims he's always loved the creative freedom of the Flash medium. If you have a wacky weird idea, you can maybe pump it out in a weekend, put it out there, and if it's good, it'll get shared around, possibly garnering millions of plays. That sort of interaction and feedback is invaluable. You're not gonna have QA or localization in your little Flash game, but the expectation is lower. The focus is on just making fun gameplay. If it takes off, you can worry about the rest later. In the full game, I was glad to see some constraints put on the slow motion and health pool as they never felt limiting in the original game. With more limited slow motion and dodging, players are forced to map out routes and combos that utilize other creative tactics. These combos actually earn you points similar to the Arena Flash game, so it's cool to see that there was something worth lifting from that little experiment. That's largely in support of what Victor was saying earlier. Flash games are such a sandbox for developers to play around with this sort of stuff. Is that something worth expanding? Does the game lean closer to that? Do you add it as a separate mode? What tweaks or additions did people like or dislike? Did they add or subtract from what you had made originally? It really is a cool process. And it's really cool to see a creator who started in Flash, were quickly lifted up to a growing indie studio, found mainstream success there, and then spun out into indie yet again. I have a lot of respect for that. Pretty short episode because it's not actually a, a series. I just wanted to put it together to help make people aware that there was a Flash game origin here. Make sure you follow Dead Toast. They're really great about sharing updates and behind the scenes looks on their Twitter. Maybe you go check out their new grounds page and see what other gems might be hidden there. And while I'm at it, I'll have some links to the animation studios involved as well because oh, I loved their work on that trailer. Quick shout out to our Patreon supporters. As always, that means a lot. There will be a link in the description if you're interested in supporting more content like this. Don't forget to leave your suggestions in the comments for other series that might be worth covering. I have a very lengthy list, but I can always add more. This is actually the first installment of Flashlight on this channel. I recently moved all non-Let's Play stuff over to here. I edited this video like seven months after I first recorded it because I lost the footage. That was my mistake, so it's, it's not very timely, but I'm, I'm glad to finally get it out there. But I'll have a link in the end cards to a full playlist of flashlight stuff. There was like a dozen episodes before this one. But this is the channel to subscribe to for all future content like this. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.